Hello everyone, we're going to talk a little bit now about signing up for RStudio Cloud and then give a little bit of an introduction to RStudio Cloud. Now we're going to go right along with this reading that's included in the first part of Module 1.A on Canvas. So um, this reading's right there and I have it here on the left side of the screen and then I'm going to have my RStudio Cloud where we're going to sign in on the right hand side of the screen. So we're going to split screen it and just go right straight down through this document. Okay, so the first step here is step one. We're going to go to RStudio Cloud uh, to HTTPS RStudio.cloud and that's where I'm at right here. Okay, and you're going to need to sign up. So you're going to click on here on sign up. Now this is going to be a little challenging for me because I've already signed up, but here's the number one thing I want you to know. You do not need plus. You do not need premium. You do not need instructor, any of that stuff. I have an instructor account. And um, anything that you need that goes beyond what's just in the free, I'm going to be able to give you through my instructor account. So there's no need to spend any money on this. You are just going to use the free account. Okay, and you're going to come down here. We're going to sign up and just click on here and sign up. All right, Bing has all the stuff right in here. This is great. Um, now you can sign up in a couple of different ways. You can put in your email and all, all that stuff, or you can sign up with Google, or you can sign up with GitHub. Most of you are not going to have a GitHub account, so we're not going to worry about that. But it's you know just single sign-on using Google. That's, that's also possible. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cheat a little bit, fill in my stuff here. And then I'm going to generate a password using my password generator. And I'm going to sign up. You want to make sure it's a strong password. And go ahead. I'm going to click sign up. Oh, wait. That already exists. So you can see I've already done this part. So I'm just going to hit cancel right here. And I'm going to skip ahead just a little bit. And it says, OK, if you already have an, uh, a, um, an account, that's me. I can come down here and instead of going to sign up for a new account, I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go back one, one more, and I'm going to log in. So I'm just going to log in with my account and I have my nice little password manager that helps me deal with all of that. And there we go. Now I'm logged in and this is what your workspace looks like. So let's keep going and I'll scroll down here to step three. Let me get rid of my scribbles. Okay, here on step three, once you've signed in, you should be logged in. You're going to see the following screen. Now, I were not seeing quite the same screen because mine's narrow because I have it split screen. But if I come up here and hit these little pancake um, or hamburger menu icon, I get all this stuff over here to the side. So your workspace, new workspaces. The difference between mine and yours is because I have an instructor account and I'm an instructor, I have all kinds of workspaces I have to work with. We're really not going to get into workspaces in this class, I don't believe, but you'll be here in your workspace. And you're limited to 15 projects um, with the free account, but that should be plenty of projects. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. So mine's a little bit messy, I know, but yours will be nice and clean. A couple of things, I'm gonna make this big for just a second that I'm gonna suggest. If you come in and your workspace, say, looks like this, right? There's a pin there, and maybe even there's some stuff over here to the, oh, no, over here to the side. There's going to be all kinds of stuff. The first thing I'm always going to tell students is come over here to this part right here and make sure you click on that. You don't necessarily need this, this RStudio Cloud menu all the time. So if you get rid of that, that gives you a little more space. Okay, and then if I get into a... Um, uh, project so ABE um, analytics for business and economics so that's you guys this is a project that's really just a stub of a project right this second Ooh, I could go in and edit it and speed this up that's cool and so this is what it's going to look like when you get in there now you may have you know this pinned and you may have something like this going on I don't know something like this over here or or other stuff. Okay, we can make ourselves, we can make this a little easier to see. First of all, get rid of that. We've talked about that. But also, if you are in Chrome, 
You can come, oh, let me get a better color. Yeah, how about some red? Right there. All right, those little dots up there, they're really hard to see, I know. But if you click on those, you can come down here and then click on this part right here, that little boxy looking thing. Then I come down and click on this button right here. I can make it full screen. Now, if I make it full screen, then I have a little more, more um, geography to work with. Okay, so I'm going to come out of this for a second. I'll come right back here, but I want to double check with my notes and make sure that we're on track with these notes. Okay, so there we go. Now, um, We'll do, we're going to come back to step four in just a second. We're, we'll hold, we'll, we're going to hold off on that for a second um, because there is some important things there. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, um, have a look here at our environment and show you a few more tips. So if we make this full screen, hey, we've got lots of geography. Now the next thing you're going to notice is I have, I'm going to pick a different color. There we go. There are four quadrants here. I can divide this into four quadrants. Okay, I'm going to call these one, two, three, and four. Okay, those are those four quadrants. Okay, this is our main workspace. Number one is where we're going to spend most of our time typing and working and living. Okay, number two, right, that's going to show you a bunch of, that's like your, your pages and dials on your, on your dashboard of your, your car. It's showing you what's going on. The most important of these is going to be this environment tab. There's a few other ones on there that are really, really important, but we won't really get to those in this class. Um, this environment tab and what's going to be on there is all the variables so here it's the global environment so like if I save um, a, a text or if I, as a variable it's going to show up in here and we're going to see that it's there I put, load some data in it'll come in there all right three is the um, console so a lot of the output will go down here and so we'll use it from time to time. You can run individual commands down here. It'll be talked about in the text a bit. But for the most part, we won't be using it too, too much. And then number four has a couple of different things. It's going to have files. And so in a project, a project you can basically think of it as a folder that holds all the stuff for a particular R project. So like in this case, this is homework number two, or your second case of the class and it holds all the stuff for case number two and so there's some files in here there'll usually be an r markdown file and there might be some output files there might even be some data files all of that stuff goes in this project folder and so what a project is is it's just something that kind of wraps it all together and, and lets you kind of work through the project in this case you know your homework for um this will be for module two Okay, but there are a few other things that are on here, like plots and packages and help and viewer. Um, a few of these different tabs we will get to, particularly the help tab, we'll use that a bit. Um, we probably won't use the packages too much because, to be honest, I do it a little bit differently. Um, and the plots we probably won't use too much because also I'll show you a little bit different way to do it, but those are both possible and, and, and quite useful. Okay, and so right now we're at the files menu and this has all the files that are in that project. Don't worry, we're going to talk about all these details multiple times, so it'll be okay. And this is just a mess, so let me clear this up. But it's really important to understand this is quadrant one, this is quadrant two, three, and four. And the reason why that is, it's not necessarily that that's the way everybody in the world does it, but that's how we're going to refer to it in this class. And so when I say, okay, look over at quadrant one, then you know we're looking at this part. And that's what I'm normally going to be talking about. Um, so that's the next thing. The final thing that I want you to know is there's a couple of ways to make this a little bit you know, easier to use. And that is if I look at this border right here in the middle, okay, see right there where I've drawn. If I take my mouse and I mouse over it, I get that little plus looking thing. You can see 
there, it's this little plus looking thing. Well, if what I do now is I click and hold, so get that click and hold, I can drag this over, and now I have a little more space to work. The next thing that I can do is, if I see these things right here, a big box and a little box, if I click that little box, it makes the console get small. All right, I can also click the big box and make it get big, um, which, you know, that's not terribly useful. Or I could click the big box on source and make it get big. But that gives me a lot of room to work. Now you might be saying, oh my goodness, look at all of this goggly gook. What is all of that? Well, here's the thing. Um, this is what's called an R markdown file. We will talk a lot more about that a little bit later, so I don't want to get too much into it right this second. This is just an overview of kind of RStudio and RStudio Cloud right now. But it really makes things easy. Like this is an H1 headline. So, uh, so I, um, um, if I was in Word, it would be the, the H1 style. This is H5. And how do I tell? There's one pound sign for H1. There's five for H5. And you can do all of that stuff. There's, you can't do quite all the same amount of, of formatting and editing that you could, like say in Microsoft Word, but there's an awful lot you can do. And it's really, really cool. So I'm going to, hopefully I can show you why that's really, really cool um, a little later in the class. But if this is just too much, there's another idea. We can come right up here and it looks kind of like an A. Although if you really squint hard and get your magnifying glass out, it's actually, I believe, a compass. And oops, cancel. All right, if we click on that, it's going to put our studio into what's called visual mode. So you can see here's visual mode, and we're going to say use visual mode. If you check this box, it won't ever show you this box again. Um, I'm just going to click use visual mode, and there you go. It makes it look a little bit better. All right, it's a little more formatted. It's still not what it's going to look like when you get done, um, but it still looks a little bit better. We'll talk a lot more about what all this stuff is later, so don't really worry about knowing what's going on here. Just know that's a that's an option that's available. Okay. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go back to our notes. And I'm going to come down here and it says, okay, step four, paste this URL into your browser. So let's do that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy this link address. Come over here to a new page and I'm just going to paste this in. This is one of the things that's so cool because I can make a project. You have that URL. We go to it and it's preparing the project. It's deploying the project. And all of the stuff that they needed for this workshop, boom, they've already set up and put into this project. And so you can see it right there. All right, and then there's further steps that we can do. All right, um, once the project is loaded, right, you can click on different files. So you're usually going to have what's called an R markdown file or a file that says RMD after it. Here it's kind of labeled in there. You can you can read it for yourself on the um, on Canvas, but here I'll show you. It's right here. And normally what the first thing we want to do is click on that. And that'll show us this R markdown file. Now, this is kind of messy because it's only half the screen, so don't get too overwhelmed yet. But there's one thing I really want to show you here um, that's the most important thing for our purposes. Little, you know, We don't need as much to know about what's going on in this, this um, workshop that they did. But we really do need to know about using R Studio Cloud is that when you load that project, it's made a temporary copy. Okay, so see that flashing in red? That's really, really important. Let me go ahead and make this big so that we can see the whole thing. Okay, now when you see the whole thing, it says over here, save permanent copy, right? Save permanent copy. It's really, really important that the first thing you do when you pull down a a project is you click save permanent copy otherwise 
everything you do in this, say you, you pull down your homework assignment from um, Canvas, it has that temporary copy linking in there. Okay, say you do that and well, but wait a minute, I do all my homework and then I close it and then I come back and it's all gone. Why? Because you didn't save a permanent copy, right? You have to save a permanent copy because what it's going to do is it's just going to take and it's a temporary copy. It's not going to actually do anything until you tell it to save it to your account. So when you click save permanent copy, it saves it to your account. And that's really, really important. So you want to make sure you do that or else you're going to lose your work. So make sure you don't forget to do that. Then you can do all this. But there's one more thing I want you to know about that. So let's say I go back to, all right, here we're in RStudio Cloud. I've got this one up here. Let's go ahead and I'll go back to my notes. I want to go back to this same URL. Okay, I'm just going to put it in again. Okay, I've already copied it. I haven't uncopied it. So there we go. Put that in, and what's it going to do? It's going to give me another temporary copy. Because here's the thing. When it's made a permanent copy, it's actually put a copy of this project into your account. Okay, so I don't need to load this, so I'm going to go ahead and close it. What I can do is I can close this. Say I want to close this, and I want to come back to this project. So let's, all right, it's called Gen AI. Let's go back to this project. I'm going to click over here. I'm going to go into my workspace. There. And notice if I come scroll down, bing, Gen AI is right there. And notice it was derived from, and it tells me where I got the project from. Okay, but it was created today. All right, that project was created almost a year ago, but this project was created today. Why? Because it copied it to my thing. And if I come in here, then any changes I make to the project are going to be here. OK, so if you go back to, say, in Canvas, you click on the homework and then you click on the homework link again in Canvas, it's just going to make another copy and then it's not going to have any of your stuff and you're going to think, what the heck happened? Well, that's what happened. All right. You will only ever go through that initial link that's, say, in Canvas once. And then from then on, you're going to access it through your workspace. OK, and because I don't want to clutter myself up too much, I'm going to go ahead and delete that project because I don't actually need it and then we're gonna go back and we're gonna finish this up so that was step four step five we might want to open up the R markdown file that's in there do some exploring okay step six um, you can knit that file okay so if I go here I'm just gonna make this big I don't really want to get too deep into this just yet because we're gonna do it later um, but this button will actually turn it into a final document. So you can make a Word document. You can make an HTML document, which is what this is going to do. You can make a PDF file. All different kinds of ways. You can even make a PowerPoint file if you want to um, in order to... Um, out of all this stuff that you have here. And it's really, really nifty because all of your stuff to like say, draw your graphs, everything, it's all right there. And if you update your data, oh, you just hit this button again and it makes it all for you again. And you don't have to go through and, you know, recopy and paste everything into a Word file or figure out how to get it from Excel into Word, all that stuff. You don't have to do any of that. It's just there for you. And so that's one of the things that makes this so neat. Okay. so. That is a going over of this particular document and a little bit about RStudio and RStudio Cloud. I know you're going to have lots and lots of questions, but don't worry because we're not stopping here. We're going to spend all of the first module, all right, and the second module of this course really getting used to R and RStudio. So we've got a lot of time to learn this stuff. So, all right, be, uh, be patient with yourself and be patient with me. All right, talk to you later. Bye-bye.